Chimpanzees are a very safe bet for our closest living relative. We're practically brothers from genetically incompatible mothers. Now, this might seem like just a fun fact with little real consequence in understanding the nature of humanity, but it's a very important step in grasping our origins. My name is Riley Harnett, and this is The Heap. Knowing that we're most closely related to chimps gives us the understanding that at some point in the past, there was a split in the animal kingdom. Roughly five to eight million years ago, a species of mysterious apes separated into two or more groups for reasons we may never know. One would eventually evolve to become humans, another chimpanzees. This group of apes is known as the chimpanzee human last common ancestor. Since all life is distantly related, any two species have one. How deep in time you need to go to find the last common ancestor of any two species depends on which ones you choose. Sloths and the algae that grow on their backs have a common ancestor, for example, but you'd need to go back in time over a billion years before you got to it. When you're looking for the origins of everything that makes us human, this species is at the very beginning. It's a crucial evolutionary benchmark. Before the last common ancestor, animals weren't able to cook, weren't able to build machines, weren't able to hit dingers at Fenway. It was only after our last common ancestor with chimpanzees that we evolved, piece by piece, the suite of traits that would allow us to do those things. Well, some of us at least. I still can't hit dingers at Fenway. Yet. But we've got a problem. Even if we found the last common ancestor, how would we know it is? Even under ideal conditions, we probably can't sequence DNA older than 1.5 million years. So that's totally out the window. If we're lucky, we can find fossils from that time period, but you can never know if what you're looking at is our last common ancestor without finding enough others to understand where it fits in our family tree. That's more or less where we're at right now. We've got fossils from five to eight million years ago. I'm gonna tell you about them, and it's fascinating and potentially real unexpected stuff. But first, let me establish a bit of a baseline here and tell you about our oldest undisputed ancestor, Australopithecus anamensis. Now, Australopithecus is a word you're going to hear a lot on this channel, so let me explain real quick. It refers to a group of extinct apes that are decidedly on our branch of the tree. Australopithecines, or members of Australopithecus, have the same suite of adaptations that allow them to walk comfortably on two legs, despite them having other differences with us, such as having smaller brains. In fact, it's when larger brains appear that we start using our genus, Homo. You know, like Homo sapiens, us. Australopithecus anamensis is particularly relevant to this topic because it's the oldest one. It's another benchmark, and we can be sure that our ancestors were bipedal at the time anamensis walked the earth, 4.2 to 4.1 million years ago. So we're looking at a one to four million year period that needs explaining. Ultimately, if you want to argue that your fossil is on our branch, you want to make sure it's walking on two legs or is transitioning towards that. Our form of bipedalism is pretty unique. We're obligatory bipeds. That means we don't have another means of getting around. This differs from faculative bipeds in which bipedalism is only one option they have to move. For example, here is a video of a gibbon who is very confused by a hedgehog. It occasionally moves with only its legs but sometimes uses its arms as well. Our obligatory bipedalism has caused our skeleton to evolve in ways you don't see in gibbons. Our spinal cord enters the skull from below, not behind, which provides a more efficient posture for a vertical animal. Our pelvis is bowl-shaped, which allows the lower back to rotate. Our feet have arches and our big toes faced forward, allowing us to walk efficiently. Our thigh muscles, which hold us upright, have required evolution to act on the femur and pelvis to accommodate them. These are the things we search for in primates older than anamensis. And we found them, but it's not as simple as you might think. Let's talk about Artipithecus. Now, not Willow Smith's debut album. Actually, sort of. See, Willow Smith says Artipithecus ramidus is the scientific name of the first hominid bones found on Earth. 
Her first mistake is mixing up hominin and hominid, which I can totally forgive her for. I mean, she was 15 and has at least a passing interest in human evolution. We should totally commend her on that. The oldest hominid that I'm aware of is Otavopithecus namibiensis, which at roughly 13 million years old shouldn't even be mentioned in this video. And in fact, the definition of hominid and hominin is still in dispute. And I honestly don't use those words for this video series because I don't want to be wrong when the dust settles. Anyway, Willow Smith means to use hominin, which depending on when you watch this video, either means or used to mean apes after our last common ancestor that are on our branch of the tree. I can't falter for calling Ardipithecus a hominin either. There's a lot of science communication that says with utter confidence that Ardipithecus is ancestral to Australopithecus. I think I'd be doing the scientific community a disservice if I didn't showcase all the doubts on this though. Ardipithecus represents two species, Ardipithecus ramidus and Cadaba. Ramidus is the key piece of evidence here, and we found material from a few individuals, including a fairly complete skeleton aptly named Ardi. Ardi was found in eastern Africa, just like Anamensis, and was very clearly a habitual climber. Its feet lack arches, but feature an opposing toe for gripping branches, and very chimpanzee-like hands with long curved fingers and a short thumb. Interestingly enough, unlike chimpanzees, Ardi was not a knuckle walker. There's no evidence in the hands to suggest so. This could be a problem. There's potential evidence that Anamensis retained features in its wrist that are specialized for knuckle walking. If so, we would expect its potential ancestors to as well. This evidence has been its own subject of debate, and I think that it would be unfair to suggest with absolute certainty that Artie can be eliminated as a potential ancestor on the grounds that it didn't knuckle walk. Knuckle walking in chimpanzees and gorillas may have also evolved separately. It's entirely possible that our last common ancestor with chimpanzees didn't knuckle walk at all. It would be very helpful to have some early chimpanzee fossils with which to test these ideas against, but unfortunately we've only found a few teeth. So if Artie didn't knuckle walk on the ground, how did it get around? Well that's a real doozy of a question. Its spine enters the skull from below and its pelvis allows for the rotation of its lower back just like us bipedal folk. But only partial femurs were found, and the pelvis was so crushed it needed reconstruction. To save you all the technical details, very few features on these fossils appear to be shared with Australopithecines. Instead, there are commonalities in the teeth and pelvis with a roughly 8 million year old European ape, Oreopithecus bamboli. Oreopithecus doesn't appear to be a candidate for our ancestor, so I won't go into too much detail on this fossil right now. But its skeleton differs with Artie's in a number of other ways. So either both groups of apes evolved to have the same features, or they share an ancestor that they inherited those common features from. The common ancestor idea solves another problem with Ardipithecus, its age. See, Artie is only 200,000 years older than our oldest Anamensis. That's not a lot of time to evolve considering all the skeletal differences we're seeing here, but it's not outside the realm of possibility. If Ardipithecus and Oreopithecus were offshoots from a common ancestor that did evolve into Australopithecus, all these problems get solved. Ardi would then be understood as having those possibly bipedal features because it retained them from that ancestor. The 200,000 year gap would be okay because it would have instead been the ancestor of Ardipithecus that took the time to evolve into Australopithecus. But ultimately, that's just an idea. There's not enough fossil evidence to prove or disprove it, so I don't want you telling your beloved other that I said that Ardi is some sort of evolutionary first cousin. The biggest takeaway here is that there are many ways to explain what we see in the fossil record. Collecting evidence means that one by one, the bad ideas get shut down, and we get closer to the truth. Artie's ancestral relationship with us is currently in limbo, but that makes future fossil discoveries that shed light on this topic all the more interesting. Paleoanthropology, the study of the origins of humanity is, in my opinion, in a golden age of sorts. New discoveries are being made all the time, and it's a very exciting field to keep an eye on. Now I realize I started this video off talking about our last common ancestor, and then immediately went to a fossil that, at 4.4 million years old, is now considered too young to be that. A few years ago when we had different expected times for the chimpanzee-human split, 
it was actually considered too old. This is because of that other Artipithecus I mentioned briefly, Artipithecus cadaba. Cadaba is only known to us in the form of some teeth and several partial bones, enough to make a good case that it's related to Ramidus, but not great enough a sample to answer any of our questions on its evolutionary relationship to us. Instead, Cadaba takes the Artipithecus lineage further back in time, to the tune of 5.2 to 5.8 million years ago, which is just beyond the most recent expected date for our last common ancestor with chimpanzees. If Ramidus is indeed our ancestor, then Cadaba gets us really close to what our last common ancestor looked like. It's truly a shame that we don't have the fossil material to better understand it. Luckily for you, the mysteries around our origins don't end there. We found other fossils within the time frame of the expected split with chimpanzees. I'll be covering those in the next episode. If you found this topic interesting, I would love if you would subscribe to the channel. There's more where this came from, and I wouldn't want you to miss it. In the meantime, if you're wondering exactly how we know that we're closely related to chimpanzees, I've got just the video for you. Thanks for watching.